Okay, well, this is a how-to video on how to do hooked highlights on a cosplay wig. A couple of people encouraged me to show how I do this and in what way. Um, hooked highlights are a technique to add, like, a different color to a cosplay wig or any other kind of wig. And if you're trying to be able to use extension hair, because it's really hard to color a wig, so it's easier to just add hair of different colors, especially since wigs tend to be kind of thin by nature. Um, first of all, you're going to need one, a cosplay wig to start working on. You can see one here. I've already put a couple of highlights in it, so you can already kind of see them right in here a little bit. You're also going to need a wig form of some kind. Everyone say hello to Derpicard, the Derp Pyre wig form. I don't really care what kind you use as long as it holds your wig. Um, if you're smart, you can use uh, a couple of like dress pins to pin your wig down, which is really convenient and helps keep the wig from sliding off. I just have mine pretty tightly gripped to the mannequin there because this is an adjustable wig. It has a wig strap. It's kind of hard to see, but there is a wig strap under there that holds it tight. Um, and also you're going to need a light. You can see my handy light source there and there. And you're going to need a nice sturdy surface to put your stuff on. You're also going to need, if you ask me, a this thing here. You can barely see it, but it is a uh, this is a, a mannequin stand used for cosmetology students. I am a former cosmetology student, so they're really convenient. And you can take your mannequin head and put it on your mannequin stand, which that way you know you have a nice surface to work with. And you can move everything around as you want like this. Woo, it's kind of actually really handy. All right, so um, you're also going to need some extension hair. Here I have some, this is a uh, Conecalon fiber, and this is the Silky Straight. I have it in two different versions of white. I actually thought this was going to be more gray. I ordered this off of Dr. Lox. Just want to give a little shout out to Dr. Lox. They're pretty awesome, and they carry lots of different kinds of hair. You can also get the same kind of uh, extension hair at various uh, hair stores, beauty supply stores. Um, generally, you're going to find this kind of stuff more like in ethnic hair stores in which they carry materials for doing weaves. That's what this is usually done for, is braided weaves or extensions. Um, here's my little package here that I've ripped open. You can see Anytime Brain 100% Conecalon. It really doesn't matter what kind of hair you use. I like to use synthetic hair because it is cheap and it does not break in. Wigs, cosplays are made out of synthetic hair anyway, so it doesn't really matter. All right, and of course, obviously, your extension fiber is going to want to be whatever color you want to highlight to. So I have a kind of a silver gray wig, and I wanted to add some, like, white highlights. So I'm using this white fiber. Good stuff. If you want to just add some bulk in spots, you could use the same color as the wig. This works for that, too, because it will add some hair to your thing. And the next thing you're going to need, you're going to need some little clippies. These are uh, cosmetology-type jaw clippy clips. You're also going to probably want a couple of tools for combing your wig as you work. This is just a very nice wide tooth comb. It's cheap. I've got a little uh, a hairbrush. This is one I use on wigs and stuff a lot. It's just a little, kind of like a Denman brush. Then I have my massive rake comb that I like to use on wigs because it's very big and the teeth are very wide and they don't rip the wig fibers at all. They're very gentle. You're also going to need something with a little point on it. I like to use a rat tail comb. Here's a comb with a little rat tail. Well, officially we call these tail combs nowadays. Whatever, same difference. And you are also going to need, or you can use, here's another thing I use a lot as a pick. Another combing, lifting type thing, pick or a lift. And you're also going to want to use something like this. Now this is kind of hard to see clearly what it is. I'm going to try to get it in focus for you, but it is a, uh, yeah, I don't know if I can focus it, but this is a, um, a crochet hook. This is actually used for uh, pulling hair through a cap when you do a highlight job, but you can use any really small crochet hook. Now, if you look at this, it's kind of hard to see because I'm sorry, but this is a cell phone camera. You're going to want to use something with a really, really tiny hook head on it. So, like, if you're looking against the wig fibers, you know, it needs to be so small. What you're basically trying to do is you're going to be trying to 
you know, weave it through these little teeny holes in your wig scalp. So it needs to be so small that it's not going to just, you know, it's going to go through those little holes, basically. And you're also going to want, most likely, a pair of just scissors to cut things open with. And uh, you're not going to be cutting the extension hair that much with these, but I wouldn't use these to cut a wig because they're not hair cutting scissors. But uh, they're good for, you know, just cutting things because you will occasionally cut, put a extension in that you realize you don't like it and you can just nip it out with a pair of scissors. So that's handy. All right. So on to your first things you need to do. First of all, you want to get everything set up. So I've got all my stuff. I've got my wig attached to my head, mounted on my handy dandy wig stand here. And I've also got my uh, extension fiber laid out. In case you can't notice, I like to put mine over the back of a chair on a loop because, uh, or, you know, stretched out like this, because it's easier to deal with when it's laying curved, because this stuff, as soon as it kind of falls down, it gets all tangled up, and it's really throwaway. So you want to try to keep it in a nice, smooth little loop, and also this enables me to pull off little pinches. That's why I like to do mine on the back of a chair. And if you have two colors, you can separate them into two little bunches like this, which is kind of convenient. All right, so let's start on the magic of how this is done. Alrighty. Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to decide, you know, where are you going to be putting your highlights in your wig. Now this wig, I'm going to be adding some fiber to bulk out this part and make it not look all scraggly. So I'm going to be adding my highlights, a lot of them right up in the surface area of the wig where they're going to be easy to see. Kind of see right here, there's some a little bit. And I've already added a couple kind of in the underneath layers. If you look under here, there's one tied in there. Kind of gives it some more color because one of the things about these highlights is it gives it a nice little subtle, you can kind of see some color difference in there, which makes the wig look a lot more high quality from a distance. And also in pictures, it looks a lot more like a real person's hair. So the first thing, mount your wig up. And what you're going to want to do is lightly brush through your wig, which I've already done with this one, just to remove any major tangles. Make sure the hair is not completely crazy because you're going to need to be combing it and moving it around. And the next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to start a line of highlights. You're going to pick where you want to do that. So you're going to take your pick or your tail comb, either one, whatever you're more comfortable with. I'm going to use the tail comb. And you're going to kind of part off a little line area for your highlighting job here. And then you're going to pick this up like this separate it, and you're just basically going to make a nice part in your wig for you to work with. It doesn't have to be a perfect part, but you want to try to get the fibers as straight as you can, so clean that part up as best you can. And then what you're going to be doing, you're going to want to go ahead and kind of clip this out of your way with whatever thing you want to do. I like to use these clips like that so I can see what I'm doing. And you can see I've already added a couple of extensions in this. One thing you have to do is these extensions need to be, they're basically tied in, they're basically looped in. You slide them in in a loop, like you're threading a needle almost, and then you pull the tail through the loop and you pull it tight and then you tie a knot. It's pretty basic. So I'm going to show you that with a large piece of fiber. Just, you know, in general. So basically what you would be doing is you take your fibers like this and you take the loop and you're basically going to push the loop under like this and then pull these tails through this loop. And what will happen is when you snug it down, you'll get a little loop like that around a piece of the netting of the wig. So I'm not going to do it for real because this stuff is not that cheap because I have to have it shipped. So let's do the first one for real. You're going to take your hook and you're going to pick a spot on your wig where you're going to do an extension. I'm going to put one yeah, right about here. You're going to find a spot on the wig in which you have... A piece of netting to look at and it's hard to see on my camera but there is netting between every weft on a wig so wherever you've got a nice space of netting in between the wefts will work you're just gonna take your hook and with the hook facing towards you you're gonna pop it through from beneath below usually if you're making it hang down and then you're gonna pop it up through like it's kind of hard to do with a camera over it like that and you can see I've got a little teeny piece of the wig netting over this. Now I usually just kind of let mine go because mine will stay like that with the hook facing up. And then you're going to grab a really, really tiny, tiny little piece of your hair because your hook probably won't pick up a lot. So literally you're going to be picking up, I mean you can see if you look at this, this is like 
you know, I mean, it's a pencil leads width thickness of hair. If, in fact, you could probably use less than this. In fact, I probably should because I might not even be able to grab all this. So I'm even using like half that. I mean, it's literally, you know, fishing line thickness almost. So you're going to take your hair and the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to offset your ends a little bit. Um, now this hair is pretty long, but my wig is really long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset my ends quite a bit like this. Change my fold, put the one in really long, one in shorter. Now if your wig's short and you're going to cut it anyway, well, it doesn't really matter. You could just fold it over in the middle the way it's already folded. But you're going to take this and you're going to kind of give it a little, I like to give mine a little half twist. Hold it between your fingers. And now you're going to come and you're going to look at your wig. And basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to turn your hook up so the little hook is facing towards you. And you're going to lay this fiber over the hook and hold it tight with your hands. And then what you're going to basically do is you're going to pull... Well, if this fiber grabbed onto the hook, you're going to pull it through the netting. And what I do is I turn the hook a little bit to the side. If you're familiar with crocheting, you'll know what I'm doing. And pull it right through. And it might rip the netting a tiny skosh. That's fine. You might hear a little pop. And you might have to finagle it like this sometimes. So pop, pop. There, you heard it go through. Popped a little netting. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, keeping your loops intact, like you can see this loop, I hope. Cat, stop it! Sorry guys, cat's in the way. You're gonna open this loop up, and you see I did not pull it all the way through, we can still see my fiber coming through. And then with the loop on the hook, you're going to pick up just your extension fiber. Now be careful and try not to pick up any hair from the wig so you don't get wig hair caught in there, but with your extension fiber, you're gonna take your fingers and open this loop right wide open. Kitty, stop, I'm trying to record a video! So my cat wants to be in the video. Everyone say hi, aces. Um, you're going to open your loop up like this, like you can see. And you're going to reach through with your finger, and you're going to grab your long tails, and you're going to grab them. And you're basically just going to pull them through. And you can see, when you do this, you want to try not to make a huge tangle of hair. Keep it all one nice, smooth little piece. And then you're basically just going to pull that down really tight and snug all the way to the netting of the wig. Snug, 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 snug. And I like to hold it and kind of pull it through with my fingers a couple times. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to need to tie this to make sure it stays. So I like to take a little couple of bits of it and just tie a little, just an overhand knot. Just, you know, make a knot. And tie a little double knot in your fibers. And if you feel them kind of stretching, that's okay. This fiber is plastic. So, like fishing line, it tends to kind of almost like melt and stretch when you pull on it tightly. It's not going to hurt it. So what you're going to be left with is an extension with a slightly shorter end and then a long end. Lay that down. And you're going to have, if you come in really close, you'll see a little tiny knot right there tied around the netting of your wig. So, that's fine and dandy. And what that's going to wind up doing is going to, when you brush the hair over it, it will hide the knot, but the extension itself with the color change is going to come right through. So, you can do these anywhere you want, but I will advise you that what you're going to want to do if you do them is you're not going to want to put them in a row. You're going to want to stagger them like squares on a checkerboard so that your wig does not have like lines of white hairs. Unless that's what you're going for. But generally, you're going to want to do different little areas of them kind of in an uneven, broken up pattern. So, now if I take my hair that I had clipped back here, you can kind of see what this will look like. You can see I added one extension in. And then when I bring this hair back over on the wig again and hide it, it blends it right in, and, but you still get some little, you can see there's little white now mixed in with that silver color, which gives me a nice, like a wig, a highlighted wig look. Which is, it's really nice for uh, cosplay, especially since sometimes cosplay wigs are so cheap. They just don't look that good in real life. And I'm going to show you what happens, too, if you if you goof when you're doing this. It's perfect. Fine, kitty. Get out of the way. Go on. You will goof sometimes when you're doing this and you grab too much hair. I'm going to show you how to solve that issue. All right, so we're going to go back, and we're going to take our comb here, and we're going to pick up, and I'm going to just do one back here. Over here. Now you can see 
I'm looking and I'm not putting them around these wefts here like this. I'm putting them in the netting areas between the wefts. Because if you wrap it around the weft, you're going to have a huge loop knot thing and it's going to look really bad. You're going to want to put them mostly, just hang them onto those little netty spaces where the wig netting is. So let's see, I'll do one. Um, there's a nice space right here. I can kind of weasel one in there. So I'm going to take my little clippy and clip some of my hair out of the way so I can see what I'm doing and I don't get hair in it. Like that. And now I'm going to reach in there and pop up under there and see there's a little bit of hair. But that's going to be okay. That's not a lot. I'll reach up under there and you can see I'm reaching under and get grabbing a few, just going under a few little threads of the wig. See, not very much. Like that. And take my extension hair. Now this time I'm going to use a lot. I'm going to show you what happens if you goof and you get too much extension hair and it doesn't pull through. And I'll show you how to avoid just having to start all the way over. So this time I've got a, this is too much for my hook. Okay. If you have a bigger hook, this might be fine, but my hook, this is way too much. It's going to fall out. You see, look, too much. Do not use this much on a tiny little hook like mine. Again, I'm staggering it so that I have a couple of lengths in there and I'm not all one length and also to make sure that at least part of the highlight extends through the long, long hair. Give it a little twist there up at the top. This just kind of helps uh, helps the needle grab it better without dropping a whole bunch of it if you just have a little twist going on. You don't have to do that though if you're using it enough or not too much. And then I'm gonna reach and I'm just gonna smash it on there. And I'm trying to pull it through and oh no, stuff's not hanging on. First of all, you can try going back up through it again and grabbing it again. And then, oh look, you can see I can still have some fibers. You can see them not being caught. So now I have some fibers. Oh, see that time nothing went through because I did not grab the right amount of wig netting, which will happen to you sometimes. So try that again. So you can see here I am trying to grab it. I've got it hooked. And you can see it's not even wanting to stay on my hook very well. Sometimes you just want to just drop it and just drop it off. But so you can see I pulled through, snap, and you can see a lot of my fiber didn't catch. Only a little teeny bit of my fiber caught. Well, here's what you can do. Take this fiber and just throw it away. Drop it. Put it on the floor. It's not worth it. And then again, this is a real thin piece that caught this time, but come back, grab it, pull it through, and knot it. And that didn't even catch because I didn't have enough. But in any case, if you get too much in there and you get a big snaggle snarl, just pull it out with your fingers and don't worry too much about it. I'm going to do one more without talking so you guys can just watch. See how this is done again without me flapping my trap. You know, if you look here, I've got some loose ones coming out. That's fine. They're not all going to catch every time. The hair is not that expensive. Just drop it on the floor and don't worry about it. See, I pull my loop tight like this. See here, I got a little snaggle, and I'm just going to pull it straight with my fingers for now till I get it done. All right, now see here, that will happen to you because hair does that. Don't worry about it. Just pull it out as best you can with your fingers, and when you comb it out, you'll snap it off, and it'll disappear, and it'll be like it never happened. All right, so once you've done a few, 
I like to stop and take a look. So I put, you know, one, two, you can see one, two, and here's another third one. So I'm going to unclip everything that I have clipped. And I'm going to look at my wig. You can see you don't want to use a fine tooth comb on like big sections of hair. It's going to rip your wig up. You want to use something nice and big like this nice pick. So you just take this pick and see. Trick to combing a wig out, by the way, is when you use your pick, don't stab it in there. Just just lift the hair lightly. You don't need to, you know, you can't comb the netting anyway. So just comb the lengths of the hair and the kind of thickness of it. Now I can look. And I can kind of see, see, look, we got some grays, silver colors, and also some little white, nice white streaks in there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it adds, you know, a little dimension and color. And if you look up near the scalp, you can barely see where I have inserted the highlighted hair because, you know, it's a, it's a little ways down from the part. Now I'm getting kind of close to the part on this because I plan on adding a little bit of hair on a folded over weft to hide this messy cheap part and put like a proper cosplay wig part in it, which will look more like this part back here instead of this here, which I can do that, that's no big deal. So I'm not really worried about how close my knots are to my part because I'm gonna cover them anyway. But if you are doing a wig and you do not plan on changing the part, I would advise you to stay about, you know, like an inch or so away from your part at the very closest half an inch to your part because any closer than that and your your cosplay wig hair is not going to cover your little knots and it's going to look a little shoddier than it would in real life. So, now let's see, take a little a little gander here. I haven't this is the back. This has no highlights and then we can compare it to the front, which has just a few little white highlights in there. And compared to the other side which has some more highlights because I've already been highlighting this wig a little bit. So you can see just a few little swatches of hair really helps to me change the wig a lot. And now what you can do is you can also, when you're done, always feel free you can go back and trim your highlights. Like see here, these highlights are really long. They don't match with the bangs that have been kind of cut in this wig, so I can just trim them to blend and it'll blend them right in. But you know, it just to me adds a nice touch and it's really cheap because a lot of times you can find that synthetic hair locally for, I mean, it's literally $3 at the very most a bag. And that is for the straight stuff. And um, just a little hint, what you want to do is if you're going to be using cosplay wig fiber and stuff and playing with that, you're going to want to do this in an area where you can just kind of vacuum it up off the floor. It's going to get everywhere. And remember, you're going to lose some of your hair. There's just no way to avoid some losing little pieces of your fiber as you work. That's fine, don't worry about it. Um, also, make sure that your fiber you get is the right texture. I have a straight wig and I am using a straight silky fiber, obviously. You do not want to use a jumbo braid, which is like has like a kind of a, a kinky, tightly curled texture to it. You're not gonna want to use that on a straight wig or you're gonna get roofy texture mixed in there, so. Be careful on things like that. And if you're going to use, you know, uh, if you're going to use anything that's like a more of a curly texture, you know, make sure you get a synthetic hair that is similar in texture. You can also use other kinds of hair. You do not have to use this braiding hair. You can use um, Yaki Pony hair, which has a little, like a little swoopy curl in the bottom, like a J. Um, there's all different kinds of hair you can use for this. But this is, like I say again, this is the loose method or hooking in extension hair on a cosplay wig. So, happy cosplay magic!